This year had too many good video games. In 2022, that was the year that only one video game came out, and that was Elden Ring. So how would 2023 handle that? Well, instead of just one really good game, developers were like, hey, why don't we make several really, really good games? Almost every month, there was at least one banger video game coming out from all directions. There were so many good games that I haven't played a lot of them because buying all of them would possibly lead me to bankruptcy. There was games like Pizza Tower, which I've only picked up recently, and it's just phenomenal. I like that while it's a spiritual successor to the old Wario games, what I really like is that it looks like an old Newgrounds cartoon from the late 2000s. Nintendo was hitting hard with Tears of the Kingdom, Pikmin 4, Mario RPG, though I couldn't play all of those because then I would have to sell a kidney in order to afford all the good Nintendo games on top of the other games I'd play. There were even some really good early access games out there. Starship Troopers Extermination is a fun and intense take on what it's like being a soldier in that universe. Lethal Company continues to take the world by storm. Ready or Not finally came out of early access and I still can't complete a run without messing up. This year, I really discovered the value of Game Pass. Being able to play so many more games this year without completely breaking the bank. Alan Wake 2 looks really good, but I didn't play it because it only landed on Epic Games Store, and I'd rather just stab my own hand than deal with EGS. Somehow, Dead Island 2 came out, but only on Epic, so you know, bring, bring, bring out the knife again. Sadly, 2023 came at a cost. A lot of layoffs everywhere. Bungie especially got hit hard despite them saying that they weren't going to let anyone go. Naughty Dog had to let people go. And some studios had to shut down entirely, even the ones who made good games. The only good moments about the business side of the industry is that Bobby Kotick is now gone, so hopefully Infinity Ward, Treyarch, Blizzard, and Sledgehammer will make good games again. There was also a ton of pushback on the live service model. Even though there were some good live service games, the idea of playing these games only for the rest of my life leads me to insanity, and I guess that's what everyone else concluded. While we had so many good games, there were some outliers. A lot of people will mention Gollum, Day Before, Redfall. Honestly, I was kind of hoping Redfall would be good because vampires seem like a fun and unique enemy to fight. I was thinking this could be something like that horror movie, 30 Days of Night, but in a video game. Arcane really dropped the ball on this one. I was already concerned after forcing myself to play through Deathloop, and Redfall seems like that will never properly be completed, no matter how much of Copium Microsoft and Arcane take. Starfield pissed me the fuck off. I played it for about 4 hours or so and was getting bored, so I turned away from it and never returned. I thought it was maybe just me, but then actual people played the game and IGN gave it a 7 out of 10, and then there was that article where it was like, hey, if you play it for 12 hours, it finally gets good. It was funny watching Bethesda and Todd getting mad at people in the Steam reviews. Your game sucks, guys, but I know what you can do. Here, this is a true business plan, so just hear me out. All you need to do is package all of those assets and give them to Obsidian. But while those were the obvious choices, there were other games that disappointed me personally. Forza Motorsport. Holy shit, this game sucks. When people who are not racing game fans look at racing games as boring and feeling the same, that is how I see Forza Motorsport. Counter-Strike 2, this one hurt me especially. CSGO was an amazing game that always felt fresh despite basically doing the same thing for 20 years. Counter-Strike 2 feels like CSGO with shiny paint, but it's using technology from 20 years ago. VAC is straight up broken right now, so there are cheaters galore. There's no new weapon, no new operation, bugs and hit registration issues everywhere, overall instability. Codemaster still wants to shove Drive to Survive down everyone's throat. I haven't seen much of it, but the new WRC game is getting mixed reviews. Modern Warfare 3 was bad, Golem was bad. We already said that, fuck. Star Wars was bad on PC. Ubisoft made Assassin's Cry, but with James Cameron. Overall though, 2023 was an amazing year for video games. And that leaves me deeply terrified for 2024.
I heard that 2042 is much better than when I played it. That's nice. That's nice. The finals. Holy shit, this is a good ass game. Take the good people that left DICE, put them in a new studio, and have them make a really innovative and fun take on the class-based shooter. Even though there are three classes of who you can play, they're so versatile and useful in their own way. Destruction is not just a form of spectacle, but it's also a form of strategy as well. The speed and the ways you can play, I just love the atmosphere. You have the looks of Mirror's Edge, the intensity of a classic Battlefield game, the announcers just adding in so much authenticity to the situation, and the OST is just a banger. This is a friendly reminder that the 2042 soundtrack still sucks shit! The only major concern is that this is a live service game, so I hope the people at Embark keep the momentum up and keep giving this game the love that it absolutely deserves. You guys are so pissed off right now. Atomic Heart is on here because it's just Russian Bioshock, and honestly, th that's okay. The atmosphere and the amount of support this game has gotten is pretty remarkable because a lot of people thought it was going to be just spat out and left alone. Yet there's DLC, stability updates, and the game is just fun and still has a little bit of Russian jank. I bought this one only because a solar flare told me to do so. And I gotta say, if you're looking for a new Hotline Miami but refreshed, then you gotta look at Ocho. This is somehow more violent, more stylized, and more fun than Hotline. It's a roguelite and you drink alcohol to make the game even more insane than it already is. There's just a heft to every little detail that just gives this game an extra oomph. Whether that be killing baddies, busting down doors, the sounds of the guns, and of course, the soundtrack. I bought GT7 for my stock PS4 and I enjoyed it so much, I bought a PS5 and got the upgrade so I can play it even better. GT7 has its own set of issues, but unlike Forza Motorsport, it's actually really fun to play. Polyphony has added so much to make the game worthy of your time, whether that be the daily races in sport mode, or the inclusion of the Sophie AI that scarily responds extremely realistically to your actions on the track. Every part of this game is not just a car lover's dream, but those moment-to-moment -moment races where you are in the thick of it are just so addicting. Fighting for positions and perfectly executing a clean pass is so satisfying. The game really wants you to develop a bond to your car so you can fully understand its strengths and weaknesses, and utilize them to your full advantage. The only real issue I have with the game is that Brazilians are just... I don't, I don't even know how to describe this behavior. Who, who did this to you? What, why are you all like this? If Bloodborne 2 never comes out, that's okay, because Liza P is close enough. To take a tale as old as Pinocchio and then just turn it into a Souls-like seems like madness. But Neo, Neo, but Neo Wiz pulled it off. The amount of detail and creativity on display to make this game feel both similar to Bloodborne but also having its own identity is just great. The combat is great, the story is interesting, the enemies become increasingly fucked up. This is a solid game, and the best part is that it's on Game Pass. So, go play it right now. Do it. You better fucking do it. You better fucking play this game, you little son of a bitch. When I heard that EA Motive was going to make a Dead Space remake, my first thought was, why? 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 Why do we need another Dead Space? Amazingly, the remake is not only as good as the original, but in some places, it's even better. It captures the same atmosphere as the original, but increasing the overall detail and making the horror moments even more horrifying. All I'm going to say is that, motive, I want a Dead Space 2 remake. 
you you can skip the third. No one no one cares. Is that a weapon? Hi-Fi Rush is just like Forspoken in every way, except not at all. It's a rhythm-based fighting game that's actually really fun to play. Chai and his friends are wonderful to listen to and interact while having some amazing fighting moments. I love the art style, the soundtrack is amazing. Well, the only gripe is that you have to play this game with the licensed music, otherwise it's just not the same. So don't stream it. Even so, God, this game is very fun. I played a lot of Cyberpunk before. In fact, I played it on day one. But the final update in Phantom Liberty makes the game so much better. Finally, you can play Cyberpunk 2077 and enjoy it to what CD Projekt Red wanted it to be. Is it entirely bug free? No. But what is here is one of the most unique and biggest takes on the FPS RPG formula. It's just so fun being in Night City and watching V and Johnny Silverhand interact with the world around them. Every time I play this game, I just smile. It, it's, it's, it makes me smile. Playing the original System Shock, you need to have a brain that's wired to work with this, um... Well, well you can turn that off, but then there's the... Uh, 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 the System Shock remake is actually pretty incredible. As not only does it copy and paste the original game and put it into better 3D, but Night Dive went in further with the detail. From the opening where your future 90s hacker man is flipping off people and doing cool moves, to the space station and how it actually rotates, the combat is heftier and the importance of resource management is even higher. All the new voice acting and animations make System Shock not only approachable to new players, but even those who played the original will have a fun time. Although the original soundtrack is gone, sadly. Yeah. Yeah, it... It, it's 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 one of those in 2022 that was the year of elden ring 2023 was definitely the year of baldur's gate 3 out of everyone that i know that has played this i am the only one who has played it the least because i thought cs2 was going to have new content baldur's gate 3 is a massive game that takes the whole idea of rpg and says yeah we are an rpg Fucking Starfield. Every little detail, the dice system, the combat, what you can do is just so limitless and being able to play this with friends is just, it's just perfection. You can play it solo, but you don't have to and that probably is the most amazing part. A game to this scale in ambition, creativity, and execution is incredibly unheard of. How the fuck is Larian still standing? Even though I haven't fully completed it and there are some slight issues, Baldur's Gate 3 takes a good look at the other games out there and gives them the middle finger. I do think that we shouldn't have every game exactly like this, but to have at least one come around here and there, BG3 is an accomplishment unlike any other. And at this point, you should just play it. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go I'm gonna, I'm gonna go continue playing it. I'm, I'm gonna go, guys. Uh, thanks for watching the video. I'll, I'll see you some other time.